Hey y'all, I'm Katrina. I wanted to introduce myself real quick because I don't do a lot of these review videos. I primarily just watch them. But I found myself in a situation where I was looking for a tent review. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for somebody to review this brand new Nemo Dragonfly Osmo tent that just came out. I haven't been able to find anything, so hopefully I can help somebody else. Um, and I apologize. Like I said, I'm just an average person. I don't have a lot of fancy microphone equipment, so if you hear a lot of wind noise and things like that, that's why. Um, also, it's 85 degrees here, so I'm pouring sweat. Um, what we are going to look at specifically today is two different tents. I'm trying to decide which one to keep. I had just downsized my standard Big Agnes Copper Spur three-person and traded it out for a two-person Copper Spur bike packet edition. Um, right after I had done that though, I decided not to take the tags off because I heard about Nemo's release coming out. Nemo just updated their tent fabric to the new Osmo fabric on several tents in their backpacking line. And from what I've understood, this Osmo fabric is supposed to be a blend of poly, sil polyester and sil nylon. Um, if that's not quite right, somebody correct me in the comments. I'm not an expert. But what attracted me to that was their claim that it's supposedly more durable and has a lot less stretch and sag when it gets wet. And so that really appealed to me. Um, here with this copper spur, it's just a traditional silk nylon. I am not rich. I can't afford a Dyneema tent and I'm not a through hiker. I do a lot of um, running, cycling, and weekend backpacking trips and bikepacking trips. Occasionally I'll do something longer like the John Muir Trail, but I don't really have a need to spend that much money on a Dyneema tent. So here I am trying to decide which one I'm gonna keep. I have a feeling it's gonna be this one, but neither one of them are perfect. Honestly, if I were to have the perfect tent, it would be this with this door, um, and we'll get into that, and then a symmetrical floor plan so that I can accommodate two wide pads in case somebody else were to come with me because that's all I have. Um, is those 25 inch wide pads because it's what's comfortable. Um, I know Nemo does have the dagger, however, <laughs> they don't have a bike packing version and I really want those short poles. So um, I'm gonna set both of these up and we're gonna go deep diving into the Nemo. This is gonna be what I'm gonna test next weekend on a short bike packing trip. So this is just gonna be my first impressions today. I do have a lot of experience, like I said, with the Copper Spur. Um, so I'm not necessarily going to need to t test this, but I will set it up for you guys just to do a um, quick comparison. So yeah, okay. let's get into what it. What I think I'm going to do is just set up the Nemo first with the footprint and the tent body. Um, and then do the same for the copper spur as well and just give you comparisons of the inner tents. And then how they all incorporate together with the rain fly because there are some differences with the copper spur rain fly incorporating into the footprint compared to the Nemo, Nemo Dragonfly. Okay, so already I can immediately tell the difference in the fabric on just the Rainfly compared to a silk nylon uh, footprint. Definitely can tell a difference. I'm not good or bad, just it you can tell by the feel of it that it's different. Okay, <laughs> lots of things in here. Okay, so I already see some color coding. So this end is green, the other is like a golden yellow. Obviously, you want to match that up with anything else.
gonna show y'all this Jake's Hut attachment real quick. So this is what I am assuming you do here is just hook this around this. I'm just assuming here. If anybody knows if that's wrong, just correct me, please. Okay, haven't staked it down yet. Just wanted to show, pop in and show you guys uh, these stakes here. They're very reminiscent of the MSR groundhog stakes to me. They've got that um, three-point system going here, but they're a little bigger, I feel like. Almost like the traditional groundhogs instead of the mini groundhogs. Um, not sure how much these weigh. I might be changing these out to save some weight. Um, we'll see. Okay, there it is all staked out. Um, just wanted to give you a quick 360 view before I put on the rain fly. I apologize about the wind again. No fancy microphone here. This is just an average person here. Uh, so far it seems, I'm gonna set up my big Agnes, but it seems like the headspace is almost exactly the same. We'll sit in it and see. Um, here we've got these famous nightlight pockets. Nemo is always boasting about um, two nice size gear lofts, similar to the big, big Agnes, but instead of it being hanging down right here, one big pocket, they've got a half sized one up here. This whole triangle is a gear loft. And then they've got another one down here. This whole triangle here is a gear loft. And then as well, you have your um, foam pockets on either side. And different than the copper spur, you have your, um, your loop utility loops on the inner tent instead of the outer tent. And there's some pros and cons to that, just kind of thinking about what my experience might be with that. Um, with your utility loops being on the rain fly, obviously you're gonna be exposed to the air. You're gonna get better airflow, but all of that is pointless if it's raining, right? So you can't really use them on the rain fly if it's a wet day. So I do like that these are on the inner tent, however, not as much airflow. So hmm, pros and cons, uh, kind of depends what your preference is there. Um, I already can tell you, this door is not what I'm used to. I'm used to the Big Agnes doors that come to a point that you can open one-handed. Let's see if uh, let's see if that's an issue. So going out up is a little difficult. I still did it one-handed though. Going down, oh, that's smooth. Uh, you know, may or may not be an issue. Just gotta jiggle it a little bit. I don't really. Think that's going to make a big difference for me. Um, then also, once we set up our rainfly, this here is an accessory which you could leave at home and save like three ounces, I think. And uh, but anyways, this is nice if you want to keep your gear dry. You can hook it to either side between the tent and the rainfly, and that's going to hold all of your gear. Okay. Um, didn't want to show you guys um, the setup with the copper spur. There's so many videos out there on YouTube. Didn't want to waste time doing that, but I wanted to quickly show you guys a um, comparison between the two of these before I put the rain flies on. So already I haven't put the um, fly or the footprint on the copper spur because I didn't want to break the tags off of that since I'm likely going to be returning this one after I test the dragonfly out. Um, but just with previous experience that I've had with other copper spurs, um, the footprint does integrate a little bit differently. So again, here's that Jake's foot that's just kind of clipping on to your... Um, whatever your tie outs here um, and then you've got the poles that integrate into the hole here this um, I believe I remember the fly clipping into this which we'll get into that in a second and then the footprint 
um, connects underneath here. So just comparing size wise, again, like you can see any difference is gonna be very negligible. Um, storage pockets, you've got a smaller storage bin here, um, shelf, and then of course that large compartment towards the foot end. So just different placement of things like that. And again, you know, here's those doors. I, I really do prefer those doors, but you know, you can, if this was staked out, you could open that easily with one hand. The Nemo is a little fidgety trying to open it one-handed, but it's not impossible. So, I mean, um, getting into the utility. So again, here we have the utility loops on the inner tent over here on the copper spur. You do not have that um, on the inner tent, but you do have your helmet utility loops here, um, which I don't honestly see myself using that. So also one other thing of note I am seeing um, where is another slight win for the copper spur. Um, the pole design, um, I've noticed, I kind of overlooked that at first, but the pole design, when you look at this, right, you have, you know, complete cross beams, you know, going four ways, and then you have your crossbar, right? Over here, you have one pole going down the middle, and then two on the head, two on the foot. And what I'm speculating is um, maybe slight differences in wind stability, but I mean, I would have to test that out and see. It would be slight. Um, I don't know if anybody else is testing this out. Please leave a comment and see what your experience is. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm necessarily gonna experience a whole lot of wind next weekend when I test this. I do expect to experience rain, so we'll, sh we'll see. Okay, um, so here it is with a fly on. Um, it does come with several points to add your guideline. They don't put it on there for you, which is kind of odd. And with this bikepacking version, I've also noticed the guideline is not reflective. So I'm probably gonna have to change that out anyway. So in my case, I guess it's good that they didn't put that on there. So over here is the side that I have my um, landing zone, as Nemo call it, calls it. And they've got the most annoying little attachment points. And it was a pain in the butt, in the butt to get the last one on in the back. It's just like a little piece of this Osmo fabric that they've made a loop out of, but it's not even cut open so I'm gonna have to adjust that before I can even use it so that's kind of weird but um, a, a few things I want to note so let's just close this here real quick so from the inside you're supposed to be able to unzip this to ventilate it and I don't think oh it does it has its own little vent rod, so you can vent on either side of the tent. I also really like the way Nemo has designed their, gosh, I can't remember what they call everything. I get it 
mixed up between Big Agnes and Nemo, but their attachment points for tying back the door. I know Big, Big Agnes, they call it a doorkeeper. Forgot what it is here, but see how I did that one-handed. I'm holding the camera with one phone and I did that with one hand. That is nice. I think it's pretty similar on the bigger side here. See, we've got that attachment point there. Okay, here they both are set up with the rain fly. Um, I definitely, I'm still leaning more towards this Nemo. I haven't changed my mind yet. Um, you know, it's nice that the Copper Spur has all their guy lines already on and they are reflective, but I can do that myself. Um, the vent port on the Big Agnes, it just has the one, but you can only utilize it from the outside. So if it starts raining, you have to come out of your tent and close it up. Um, these door tie backs are a pain in the butt to do even with two hands. I, there's no way you can do it with one hand. And then again, you have your utility loops on the outside instead of the inside, which that's both good and bad. Good for airflow on a nice, perfect day, but if you expect to encounter any rain, they're unusable, right? So, um, okay, so I have blown up two of my wide pads and only one of them is a rectangular wide. So I've got a 72 by 25 inch rectangular Nemo tensor pad. And then I have an Xped Sin Matte wide mummy pad. So at the foot end, you see it's possible, it's really tight. But for some reason where you would think it would fit better at the top where it's wider, it's really tight. They're overlapping. There is no way. I was about to blow up my Rapide rectangular wide just to see what two rectangular wide pads look like in here. There's no way. I'm not even going to waste the effort on an 85 degree day blowing up another pad. There's no way they can fit. Not even these are going to fit. So just wanted to show both those in there for those that are interested like me. Again, a perfect two-person tent would be the dagger, probably, because it's symmetrical. It's 50 inches at the head, 50 inches at the foot, but they don't make a bike packing version. So here I am with this. It'll do for now until somebody catches on that that's what the market wants. For just one person, though, this is great. So you can fit a nice wide pad in here have plenty of space. I mean, you might can fit, you know, of course, two 20 inch pads in here, an adult and a child. Two adults are gonna have a hard time in here. Um, you have two nightlight pockets here, which Nemo brags about. It's gimmicky, but it's fun. Um, you also have your extra large storage at the top. This whole big triangle is a storage bin. It's much bigger in person than on the pictures. The width of it is probably about the same as the copper spur, but the copper spur hangs down lower so that you can fit more. And then of course you have your other gear loft at the foot end where you can fit even more gear. Um, no complaints. Uh, it's a great tent. I really like the thought that they put into every single aspect of this tent. Um, feels a lot more user friendly than the Copper Spur in most aspects. And I can't remember if I pointed this out, but I really like how the center loop here is a clip. So um, if you don't have a carabiner, you still have a way to hook up a lantern 
of some sort. I also want to point out I'm sitting directly in the center. I'm 5'5", and I have a good amount of space between me and that top gear loft. Um, about the width of my hand outstretched with, you know, my pinky to my thumb. Pretty good amount of space there. Um, laying down, I have so much space, both at the head end and the foot end. Taking a look here at the copper spur. Again, they have those doors that I like. Single-handed, a little bit smoother, not a huge deal. Here you have the copper spur with one wide pad. Let's just put this X pad in here real quick and see. <laughs> it's, I would argue that it's even worse. Just a hair worse than the dragonfly over there. There's no way. Okay, here I am inside the copper spur. It is getting really hot though, guys. There's so many reviews of the copper spur online. I'm not going to go into every little detail of this other, other than just stating that the head space feels the same, the width feels the same. So as far as the size goes, if that's any kind of factor for anyone out there deciding between these two tents, there's, there's no difference there. Really the difference is going to come down to the pole structure, the fabric, and the small attention to detail and key features like for example how the big agnes has a better pole structure just ever so slightly the nemo has a better fabric the nemo has better door keepers better accessories in my opinion better features um so it really just depends on your preference. I mean, either one of these tents is gonna be a great tent. Um, you can't go wrong with either one, but. Okay, well, I had a summary video for you guys going over this total weight, what I thought about each one, um, and then little component weights of like individual things and way to cut some ounces but I unfortunately lost all of the audio. So I'm gonna try my best to do just like a really quick recap. Um, first of all, the Nemo Dragonfly Osmo bike pack, the claimed pack weight without the footprint was three pounds, 14 ounces. On my scale, once I weighed everything with the footprint, it was four pounds and three ounces. Then the Big Agnes Copper Spur. Um, I think the claimed weight was also three pounds and 14 ounces. Somebody correct me on that. But on my scale with the footprint, um, obviously that's more with a footprint, but that was four pounds and two ounces. So one ounce lighter, not a huge difference. Um, as far as the individual components go I don't remember all of those weights when I go test this out and get it all back out I'll do my best to try to measure or weigh everything and I'll try to update it in a pinned comment or um, maybe the caption or something um, or I'll just do a whole nother video uh, with my final review um, as far as weight savings goes Obviously, if you don't take the footprint, that's going to be some weight savings. You can just use some Polycro or some Tyvek or no nothing at all and save weight there. But as far as shaving more weight off of the standard package weight without the footprint, which I think the claimed weight was 3 pounds and 14 ounces with the Nemo Dragonfly, um, obviously that bike packing bag is really... Um, it's overkill for backpacking. So if you just swap that out with um, a regular ultra um, ultra light stuff sack, like a Sea to Summit Ultra Seal sack that's like five liters, those are two and a half ounces. So um, a few ounces lighter there. Then you can swap out the tent stakes uh, for something a little bit lighter because those are pretty beefy. 
then um, lastly, you can leave that um, landing zone behind. And that's a three ounce um, weight savings there, I think. Uh, forgive me, I don't remember all of the individual weights. But I hope that's helpful, helpful to you guys. I know I had a hard time finding somebody's honest real life review of this. I'm gonna do some more testing and hopefully uh, come back with an update.